Hi everybody, this is Nikki and I'm here to do part two of um, Control IQ and Basil IQ tandem phone calls, whatever I was doing in that last video. Um, but I've discussed the Basil IQ part of it, uh, so I'm on to Control IQ. This is personal thought, personal conversations, personal whatever, no medical advice whatsoever. Um, so please do not go and adjust the setting based on anything I say because um, it might be wrong. Um, or it might not work that way or, you know, whatever. Okay, um, so again, the reason I had called Tandem in the first place was to was to try to find out whether or not, whether or not you can adjust settings to kind of fine tune control IQ. And very specifically, the question was, can you affect the frequency of suspends and or the duration of those suspends? Um, because on Medtronic, I will say people kind of started to get into this idea that you could use setting changes as like a dial. Medtronic, although they would encourage people to adjust settings left and right, um, they would also say very clearly they are not meant to be a dial. So I am in incredibly curious about algorithms in general and whether or not there's any dial that you can use for any part of it. Um, and I will tell you that my personal theory is that no, there's not. It's just not quite the way it works. Um, but I'll get there. Okay. Anyway, or maybe not. Um, so the question is really about, about dial, about settings changes and, con and control IQ. Um, so, and for everything from here on out is kind of a combination of what all three reps said. Um, mostly it was the, the senior specialists. Um, and I will say that almost across the board, they were in agreement. There was a couple of things here and there that one rep said the other two didn't. Um, but they were kind of minute uh, details. So I felt like there's pretty good agreement. Um, okay, so we started off with control IQ parameters. Um, these are good to know because this is, in essence, how control IQ is determining your change in basal rate um, or your need for a change in basal rate and your need for suspense. Um, okay, in control IQ, it says if you go below 112.5 uh, milligrams per deciliter, control IQ will reduce the basal. If you continue on below 70 milligrams per deciliter, control IQ will suspend the basal. If you go above 160, it will increase the basal. If you exceed 180 milligrams per deciliter, uh, control IQ will, will deliver an auto correction bolus. Um, standard control IQ target range is between 112 and 160 milligrams per deciliter. Um, although I think the real target is 110. Um, sleep activity narrows the range. So here's your options in control IQ. You can either turn on sleep activity or exercise activity or just kind of use standard control IQ. Um, if you turn on sleep activity, it narrows the target range to 112 and a half to 120 milligrams per deciliter. And if you choose exercise activity, it elevates the range um, to 140 to 160 and uh, to 140 to 60, therefore kind of decreasing the basal or making it a little less aggressive. Um, in all three modes, control IQ will adjust basal rates if you're predicted to go outside the selected target range, but only in standard control IQ and exercise activity will it deliver an hourly autocorrection if the requirements are met. Um, okay, so those are what they're calling the control IQ parameters, and those are very concrete rules, but those are probably not with all the specific, you know, I mean, that's, that's generally how they're working, how control IQ is working. Um, so here we came the big question. What does control IQ use to determine the need to suspend insulin? I start off with this question because again, the discussion was that control IQ can be manipulated um, in how often it's gonna deliver suspends. So the first thing I asked them was, what does control IQ use to determine the need to suspend insulin? Um, and then can changing the correction factor affect control IQ's use of suspends? Um, okay, so, okay, all three reps were in agreement here. So, sorry, that's my coffee. Um, all three reps were in agreement here and gave some summary of the following conclusion. Control IQ suspends insulin based on current and predicted blood glucose. Control IQ does not use any other factors, including correction factor, in determining when to suspend. Um, 
So Alexis, the senior pump specialist, proceeded to explain how Control IQ uses three of the last four CGM values um, as their basis for predicted blood sugar. Um, and it is not possible to either influence your current blood sugar or that predicted blood sugar without managing your diabetes differently. You know, there's no setting. It's just whether or not I am high or am going high or whatever. Um, so um, in short, the user cannot affect how often control IQ will suspend nor for how long it will suspend through any dial-like type of settings. Um, Although there is no way, and here is just kind of the common sense piece, although there is no way to influence frequency, frequency and or duration of suspense through settings changes, looking at precipitating factors um, that led up to a dropping blood sugar is, very, is, is a very good practice, right? Like that's, that is, um, in general, if I am crashing all the time, then I am kind of forcing control IQ into a corner where it's gonna to have to suspend me all the time. Um, if I know that when I go run into the food store, which always ends up an hour you know, thing for me, if I know that my blood sugar drops while I'm in there, instead of going in and letting Control IQ stop my insulin because of a falling blood sugar, instead of doing that, if I put on exercise activity and I kind of soften the, the basal rate, I might be able to avoid the, the suspend altogether. Um, so what they're saying is really kind of looking at what you're asking control IQ to do for you is a better solution than trying to than trying to trick it into not suspending. Um, okay. Um, okay. And then I said, for example, maybe uh, housework or running errands regularly causes a drop in blood sugar. Um, choosing activity, therefore, lightening the basal load is one way to um, decrease reliance on suspense. Okay. Again, instead of trying to trick the algorithm into being less aggressive, help the algorithm avoid the need to take such harsh, harsh actions. Um, okay, so then the next question then, because this is a different question, is can changing the correction factor setting affect the basal delivery in control IQ? Notice here there's a, difference outcome, a different outcome in question. The original question referred to whether or not, control, whether or not we could affect how control IQ suspends insulin, um, whereas this one is looking at whether or not adjusting the correction factor, whether or not it will influence the basal delivery and control IQ. Um, according to Alexis, the answer, though a little complicated, is yes, adjusting the correction factor will affect automated basal delivery. Um, and here is the example she gave me. She said, say my true correction factor is one to 50, which is to say one unit of insulin is expected to drop my blood sugar 50 milligrams per deciliter. And I make it less aggressive by setting it one to 100 or one unit of insulin to 100 milligrams per deciliter. Um, so basically by changing that setting, I've, I've halved what my, what, um, uh, you, what insulin it would give me, you know, for, for a correction bolus. Um, when my blood sugar is above target, control IQ will consider the insulin on board, the IOB, and correction factor in determining how much that insulin on board should, how much that insulin on board should do for me. It would adjust the basal rate according to how much insulin it believes I need to get back to that target, 110 milligrams per deciliter. In the case where I adjusted my correction factor from 1 to 50 to 1 to 100, the algorithm would calculate half the insulin in my correction boluses, both in manual boluses and auto, and auto boluses, as well as in the basal, again, making it less aggressive. Um, and then she went on to say, and this like kind of, you know, sparked a, a you know, little argument in a group, <laughs> but control IQ is using everything in your personal profile to determine your automated basal rate. It's using the correction factor, carb ratios, and your program basal rates. So tweaking any of these should be reflected in your basal delivery. Um, that did spark a debate and that did come from the, the senior pump specialist. So I am including it here. Um, and I can't remember exactly what it was that sparked the debate. It may have been the basal rate part of it. Um, no, it wouldn't have been, I can't remember what it was, but um, 
but this came from their senior pump specialist and she and I, we were on the phone for an hour, um, you know, doing these, having this discussion. But with that being said, and I either said it in this video or the last one, um, call these companies a dozen times and get a dozen different answers. Um, and I think it's because in general, they don't really know. And I think, and to be fair, I think it's because in general, they are basing their own answers probably on the feedback they've gotten and we can talk until we're blue in the face about our own diabetes but even we are regularly wrong <laughs> you know but also very regularly just um confused by what the number is and what it means <laughs> i'm gonna finish my coffee really quick and i'm gonna come back for the other video thanks for watching bye